Hey guys, welcome back to Miller's Med Talk. So today I'm going to quickly, just briefly go through um, some more basic key terms that we need to understand pharmacology. So I'm going to go through the difference of what an agonist is, an antagonist, a competitive antagonist, a non-competitive antagonist, and a chemical antagonist. So all of these here describe basically, we can classify drugs into these categories and that sort of describes the way the drug interacts with the receptor to have a certain outcome. So we're going to start with an agonist. So what is an agonist? So an agonist is a molecule that binds to a specific receptor on the cell membrane to activate it. Okay, so we've got the agonist binding via lock and key mechanism. It fits in nice and tight to the receptor and it has its resultant effect. Yeah, so it causes a biochemical change in the cell. If the agonist leaves the receptor, this deactivates the receptor and we no longer have that effect being produced. So that's an agonist. So it's gonna lock in and it's gonna have a downstream effect. What is an antagonist? So an antagonist is going to bind to the receptor and block its action. Yes, so binding but blocking the action. So it's the cell's not going to produce that effect. So a lot of molecules can do this. Um, for instance, for seizure, so a sodium glucose 2 transport inhibitor, this will bind on the receptor and block the action. So then we get increased excretion of glucose through the urine. Okay. Then we have a competitive antagonist. So this will bind to the receptor in presence of other agonists floating around. So the agonist and a competitive antagonist will both fight for that receptor site. So a competitive antagonist might be trying to bind here and then you've got an agonist trying to bind as well. So they're sort of fighting for that same um, receptor binding site. Yeah, so they're competing, hence the name. Now, what is a non-competitive antagonist? So this here will bind to the receptor at a site different to the agonist binding site. So let's say your agonist wants to bind here. Your non-competitive antagonist will bind over here. So at a different site. This will then deactivate the receptor and reduce the agonist action. Yeah, then a chemical antagonist. So what is this? So this is um, floating around and it's going to bind to an agonist and then it's going to, by binding to the agonist, it's going to change its structure and therefore prevent the agonist from binding to that receptor binding site. So whenever we get the binding, we always use the lock and key mechanism. So I'm just going to go over it again just to summarize. So an agonist is going to to bind the receptor site and change the cell and activate the cell. Yes, if it leaves, there's deactivation. An antagonist is going to bind to the site and block the action from happening in the cell. A competitive antagonist is going to compete with the agonist for that binding site. Yeah, so we've got a bit of a competition. Um, so there's agonists and competitive antagonists floating around and they're competing. So they're in a competition. Then a non-competitive antagonist will bind to the receptor but at a different site to where the agonist would bind. So this is going to deactivate the receptor and reduce the agonist's action. Um, a chemical antagonist isn't going to work on the receptor on the cell. It's just going to bind directly to the agonist, which then will change the shape and prevent it from going into that receptor. So it's going to prevent the agonist from binding. Now there's several um, different drug classes, uh, different molecules that we can put into these categories. So let's take for example a, um, a Saba, so something like salbutamol. So this is a short acting beta agonist. Yeah. So Salbutamol, which we use for asthma, once we inhale it in the puffer, it's going to, it's short acting, hence the name Saba. 
beta agonist. So it's going to find the beta cells in the location where it's going to exert its action. It's going to use the agonist, which is the salbutamol, to bind and then activate the cell. And then it's going to open up and dilate the bronchioles to increase um, oxygen into the cells. So this is why it's really good for asthmatics. So all these drugs are going to fall into various different um, categories. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. I was trying to keep it very simple, straight to the point. Um, yeah, so now when you learn about your drugs and pharmacology, with the understanding of agonist, antagonist, competitive antagonist, non-competitive and chemical agonist, you'll be able to class them into these categories. And yeah, it gets really exciting and fun. So yes, yeah, subscribe to Miller Med Talks because you don't want to miss out on any hot topics.